In this video, we'll talk about the traits of successful traders or what makes great traders great. What do they do? What do they think about? And not just on the like strategy level, because strategies are one thing. And this is not what will make you earn millions. But let's talk about the bigger things that will help you build a good trading career over the long term. As you might have known, I'm doing a series sponsored by Pepperstone. We've done already nine videos, this is the 10th one, so the last one of the whole series. And the cool thing about this series is that I'm able to kind of get some of their people working there to share their lessons on YouTube, on this channel, and I really appreciate this quite a lot. So they come here, they share what they think about, they share um, their thoughts on different topics. I'll link the whole playlist below if you want to check it out. The whole 10 video series covering quite different topics about trading, we talk about cryptos, we talk about trading style, we've talked about how to use MT4, MT5, all these things. And you can check this out after linked below the video. But for now, let's talk about what makes great traders great. What do they think about? What do they do? And for that, they suggested me a guest that I couldn't refuse to have on the channel because I've had her many times, Mandy Preston Jenny. So here's a bit of background about Mandy. And she's gonna be sharing what makes, in her mind and in what she's seen before, great traders great. My name is Mandy Preston Jenny. I'm an active Dex trader trading with Pepperstone. And I'm also a highly trained performance coach. I help traders from all backgrounds, all asset classes to overcome self-sabotaging behavioral patterns and help them be more disciplined. And I also help traders who are already successful to achieve the next level of their trading success. Now, the first thing you'll notice when you start to trade and when you play trades in the market, or you just start to look at a chart perhaps at first, is that trading involves some pressure. It's really hard to trade and have no pressure ever, like be super zen. Some people might do it, might take them a long time, but that pressure is kind of inevitable. And how you deal with that pressure is what separates the good traders from the bad ones. First, we need to look at what trading actually is. Trading is a performance activity that requires constant problem solving and requires optimal decision making. The challenge, however, is that we need to do that under risk and uncertainty and under pressure. And that's why successful traders, they try to create as much certainty as possible. And the way they do that is with three success factors. So these three th success factors are, number one, you have to have a proven back-tested strategy, of course. The second one is the skill to execute the strategy. What I mean with that is you need to know under which circumstances, in which market context your strategy works. And most importantly, in contrast, you also need to know when it doesn't work. And the third part is the ultimate question, the one that trading performance actually deals with. Is the trader able to execute that strategy on a consistent basis? Does the trader have the self-discipline to execute that strategy flawlessly? Now, one thing that traders need to learn, especially aspiring traders that really want to make a living out of this, is how to not get affected by the day-to-day -day and kind of like how to ground yourself to not change your mood based on things that happen in the market. Because every day is a new day and every day you can have a losing trade, every day you can have a big winning trade. And if you let yourself get affected by that, you're in for a pretty tough ride because you might be too happy and then things start to, to fall down because you pay less attention. Or you might be feeling like depressed and angry and then things just get worse because of that. So really important to know how to ground yourself and adjust your way of thinking. You know, Etienne, everybody knows what to do, but it's doing what you know in the heat of the moment that's the hard part, and that is what sets the successful traders apart. We all know if you follow the golden rule, the uh, you know, cut your losses short and um, in, if in doubt, stay out, that we have a fair chance, every trader has a fair chance to succeed. And what that really means is that we have to be disciplined to do those things. And then we're already 80% there. Now that whole process of kind of staying grounded and, and not affected by the day-to-day -day is based on emotional stability. And a question you might have, which I had myself also, is how can you improve that emotional stability in trading? Successful traders, they usually display three traits that helps them to be disciplined and to manage themselves even in the face of um, failure, in the face of pressure, and in the face of stress. And the three traits are, number one, emotional stability, number two, high level of conscientiousness, and number three, a stress coping strategy that is solution focused. Let's have a look at emotional stability. In order to create 
consistent profits, we need to be able to have a consistent financial decision-making process. And what enables traders to be consistent in their financial uh, decision-making is emotional stability. Emotional stability means that their mood doesn't go up with their equity curve or down with the equity curve. They keep stable. It doesn't mean that they panic with every tick. What it means is that they have such a self-belief that they know there's always a way, that even in the face of when things don't go so well, that they can find a solution. And so that enables them to get back into the rhythm of the market, to get back into making good financial decisions when they maybe have made a few mistakes. So how does a trader develop emotional stability? Let's look at the contrast to emotional stability, that is being highly neurotic. Neuroticism means that a trader has high emotional mood swings. And when we have high mood swings, that means that our financial decision-making process is also affected. We are not able to consistently make the same good decisions. Now, let me give you an example. Last week, I was working with a trader who uh, trades in the room with a mentor. And um, my trader had a trade running and the trade was going well. But his mentor said, I'm currently not in a trade because I can't see any setups. So what did the trader do? he closed out his trade. So that's the first indication of emotional instability. An emotionally stable trader is not being affected by what other people do. Right? They just continue on their path. Then what happens, of course, his trade went really well and would have been a massively big profit. That caused my trader to feel frustrated and to feel angry. And as a result of these angry and frustrated feelings, the trader started to go on tilt. So he started executing trades without following his strategy. And of course, he ended up in a massive drawdown. It was like a $10,000 drawdown. So that is a sign of emotional instability. Now, at the time before we spoke, all he saw was the drawdown. He was really upset, of course. And we then worked together and looked at what the trigger was. So the trigger was really that he was frustrated that he listened to someone else and didn't trust himself. And that then triggered the course of events. And what the trigger was, why that um, ended up in frustration was because he had the feeling of not being in control. And what happens is when we feel we are not in control, we try to gain control back. And how do we do that? We do that by pressing that mouse button, executing trades. That gives us the illusion of control, but not really control, we know that. So that's an example of emotional instability. W the work that we did was him being really clear on what the trigger is. And now he knows next time if he comes in a similar situation that he would be prone to making those mistakes. Now, that also leads us to high conscientiousness, Etienne. Because in order to be emotionally stable, we need to look at um, high conscientiousness. A trader who is emotionally stable, they do what they say they will. They don't just do what they feel like doing. And this is a real big um, drawback that I see with traders who are failing. They do what they feel like doing. That means they say they're um, getting out of a trade at a certain level. Then it feels uncomfortable, it hurts, and then they don't execute their loss. So they give in to that feeling of not wanting to feel bad by taking that loss. The third trait of successful traders that I have observed is that traders who are highly neurotic and have a low level of conscientiousness, they also usually deal with stress and failure and uncertainty with a problem-focused coping strategy. That means that they are focused on what's wrong with them, how come that they can't do what they say they're doing, how come they can't be disciplined. Um, they feel bad about themselves, they feel angry, they feel defeated, they want to give up. So they make it all about themselves. The solution-focused coping strategies that our emotionally stable, highly conscientious traders display are all about mental toughness. Mental toughness means that they are able to think critically, to have logical thinking and to analyze the market. So they make it about the market, not about themselves, in the heat of the moment, under pressure. They still have access to their cognitive thinking rather being taken over by their emotions. 
Now, what is also interesting about traders who have solution-focused um, coping mechanisms, they are more focused and more concerned about protecting their capital than feeling bad about taking a loss. They do what needs to be done even in the face of pain because they're concerned about their capital and don't worry about that loss. That is one really big solution-focused approach. And finally, here's one last mindset shift that you can apply in the market that will make a big difference in your result. It's all about how you see things. So in summary, we can say that highly successful traders distinguish themselves from failing traders by the following traits. They're emotionally stable. They have high conscientiousness. They have a great team that they work with. They have habits and routines that help them to always be on the top of the game. They are aware of their humanity and that they are fallible human beings and don't have un unrealistic expectations of themselves and others, whilst they're having high standards and expectations of themselves and, um, how, and their performance. So I hope this was useful. I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section once again. Let me know what you think of this video. Here are a few comments of the past video. If you should comment, as always, as you see. And the more you guys comment, the better it helps this video rank better. And that's just awesome because it can help more people and give these lessons to people that might need them and that want to be able to level their game and change their game. As a last reminder, I have a deal with Pepperstone. They don't pay me for every sign up since that series of video was sponsored by them. But if you want to sign up with them, I would appreciate it. And they are a good broker as well. And they would love it to have you as a client and to be able to serve you and do business with you. They are a good broker. They have a really good customer service. They are like cutting edge in terms of technology and how to do things. So check them out. Link below for that in the description. And as always, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. I'm there to help as always. And I'll be catching you back here in the next video pretty soon.